legends of gods and heroes and kings and queens and giants and monsters and other magical creatures. Last week I told you the story of Iliad, the Trojan War. If you haven't watched it, do go watch it because this story is in a way a continuation of that story. So if you've watched it, you'll enjoy this even better. The Odyssey and Iliad are two epic poems written by the Greek poet Homer. It was written in the 8th century BC. Now Iliad was about the Trojan War and the Odyssey is their journey back home after the war. In the Iliad, we spoke more about Achilles, but Odysseus also fought in the Trojan War. Now this story, we will follow the adventures of our second Greek hero, Odysseus. Odysseus began his journey at the end of the Trojan War, which they had won under his military command. He and his men had been fighting for 10 long years. Yes, that's how long it took for the Trojan War to end. Once it ended, they set sail on the Aegean Sea to reach their beloved civilization, Ithaca, once again. While to war they sailed united, each faction of the Greek army now sailed independently to reach their different countries. Odysseus and the men he commanded themselves set sail aboard 12 ships. However, Zeus was very angry with the Greeks, especially with Odysseus. It was due to his cunning that they won the Trojan War. He was the visionary behind the deceit of the Trojan horse, with, of course, a little help and guidance from the goddesses Athena and Hera, who had an axe to grind with Paris, the prince of Troy. So Zeus sent this huge storm. I must say, he was rather fond of sending these huge storms. So anyway, he sent this huge storm that pushed Odysseus and his men offshore. They had many adventures on their way back home to Ithaca. Today, I'm going to tell you about some of those adventures. So let's get them out of Drago without any delay. Now, Drago, I don't want you to act up today. You know Drago, of course. The sly dragon. Drago? Now let me get the story out of you, yeah? Easy boy, easy, easy. It's just Lady Fifi. Now where, where is the story, yeah? Ah. The Odyssey. The journey back home. The first story is about the island of the Sikonis. The Greeks say Chikonis. Now, after sailing for a few days, Odysseus and his men ran out of food. So as soon as they spotted some land, they sailed towards it. Now on the land lived the Sikonis. They were a tribe. They were friends of Troy and they had fought for Troy against the Greeks during the Trojan War. Now when they saw these ships coming, at once they knew they were the ships of Odysseus. And they scrambled up the mountains and they hid themselves, so scared they were of Odysseus. Odysseus and his men landed on the island. They scouted the island for food. And as the Sikonians watched from the mountains, they saw the Greeks, how they plundered and looted their island. Now they feasted on all the food and they packed a lot more to take for their journey. And then Odysseus asked his men to come to the ship because they needed to sail. But the men wanted to drink wine. It had been a long time since they had had any wine. So they said they're not leaving the island till they finish every single drop of wine. The Sikonians saw that all the Greeks were drunk and sleeping. So before first light, they crept down the mountains and they came onto the island and slaughtered most of the sleeping Greeks. Odysseus and some of his men woke up and they ran. They ran to the ships and set sail forgot all the food they had packed. This fleet had taken heavy losses. Six men from each of the 12 ships had gone dead. Now for the second adventure, the Lotus Eaters. There's also a poem written by Lord Tennyson called The Lotus Eaters. It is based upon this. You must read it. Have a read through. Really nice. So anyway, having barely escaped the Sikonians, Odysseus and his men were blown off course at sea again. They were on the lookout for an island. Again, they needed food. Again, because when they fled, the Sikonians, they had no time to collect all the food that they had packed. So they needed to find an island and get some food. They spotted an island, the island of the Lotus Eaters, and sailed towards it. Now Odysseus and some men went on the island to scout it for food. The other soldiers were left behind to guard the ships. Now on that island grew a local plant, the Lotus. And all the islanders ate only the lotus plant. It was a narcotic. So they were constantly 
in a daze, happy or fast asleep. There was no other food on the island. Odysseus discovered this. So he and his men were coming back. Now the soldiers who were guarding the ships were also very hungry and they came across the lotus plant growing right there and they ate it. As soon as they ate it, they entered a psychedelic daze, a dreamlike stay and they started singing nonsense and dancing away. When Odysseus and his men came back, they told the soldiers, come on, let's sail, there's no food here. The soldiers didn't want to leave, they refused to leave. Odysseus and his men had to drag them up on the ships and tie them up on the masts to stop them from jumping back into the sea and going to their beloved sacred lotus plant to eat it. They set sail again on the third adventure. Polyphemus, the Cyclops. You remember who the Cyclops were? The sons of Gaia, Mother Earth. Okay. So after sailing for weeks, again they spotted a strange land. Hungry for food, they sailed towards it. When they landed, they came across a cave, a huge, gigantic cave, size of a cave that no man could have even dreamed of. They were scared to go inside, but so hungry were they that they put aside their fears. They slowly entered the cave. Inside the cave, they came upon a flock of sheep. All the men cheered and danced and rejoiced. They went on to cut up a couple of sheep and had lunch. When they finished and their tummies were full, they turned around to leave, but found that a giant one-eyed monster was standing in front of them, blocking their exit. He was almost as huge as the mouth of the cave. Polyphemus, the Cyclops, demanded to know who these creatures were and how they dared eat his sheep. What he just said, Oh, we're just simple seafarers. We were hungry, came upon the island looking for some food. But that didn't calm Polyphemus. And he said, You will pay for your insolence. The Cyclops prevented the warriors from leaving. And every day he would have one or two of Odysseus' warriors, depending on his hunger bags. This did not sit very well with Odysseus. He was rather annoyed, but there was nothing he could do. But he did. He hatched a plan. And what he did was he had this giant gourd of wine. He gave it to Polyphemus and said, Here, please accept this gift to show you how sorry I am. Cyclops was rather pleased. He took the wine and drank it all up in a couple of seconds. And in a couple of seconds, he was fast asleep. Once Polyphemus was asleep, Odysseus took his iron poker and put it in Cyclops' own fire and heated it till it was red hot. Then he took it, crept up to the Cyclops and poked it into his one and only eye. The Cyclops howled in pain and got up and demanded to know. Who has done this to me? Odysseus said, Nobody. The Cyclops continued to howl in pain, and his brother Cyclopes heard his howls and came running to him and said, What happened? What ails you, brother? So he said, I have been blinded by nobody. Brother Cyclopes looked at each other, rather confused. And then they burst out laughing. And then they told him, Well, if you have been blinded by nobody, then there is nothing to worry about. Ta-ta! And they left. Now the next day, when the Cyclops let out his flock of sheep to graze, Odysseus and his men finally managed to escape, hanging on to the bellies of the sheep. Once they were out of the cave, they ran towards their ship. But Odysseus just couldn't resist the urge to taunt Polyphemus. So he yelled out, It is I, Odysseus, who blinded you! When the Cyclops heard that, he ran out of the cave behind the men. They were on the ship, so he picked up a huge boulder and flung it on the ship of Odysseus. Lucky for Odysseus, 
he escaped otherwise it would have meant certain death for him but unlucky for him the cyclops called out to his father to avenge him and his father was poseidon the sea god who swore to avenge his son and odysseus became his sworn enemy forever looks like zeus was hellbent or rather heaven bent on torturing odysseus everything that could go wrong did indeed go wrong on this journey and now add to the drama poseidon the god of the sea father of the cyclops polyphemus was out for revenge we will continue with the odyssey and a few more adventures of odysseus next sunday tata from lady fifi don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button